Hey, this is Simeon from praisetracks.com. And they say a coin has two sides. And today we're going to find out that so do piano libraries as we take a look at Production Voices Concert Grand LE. Okay, we're back. And if it's your first time here, I've been taking a look at a lot of piano libraries lately from different manufacturers, different types of pianos. And uh, today we're going to take a look at another piano from Production Voices, the Concert Grand. And like I said at the beginning that a coin has two sides. Well, this is the other side of the coin as far as Production Voices pianos go. The Production Grand that we reviewed earlier was based on a Yamaha C7. Now the Concert Concert Grand that we're going to look at today is based on a New York Steinway D. So it's going to be a really interesting uh, time to hear the differences and the contrasts. You can see right away that it's kind of familiar, but what this adds, you have nine different perspectives instead of just eight. And they used a few different microphones just to suit the type of piano, which is more, it's, a, it's just got a different tone. So let's just dive in. So I'm just going to call up the first preset, and once again, the developers here have given you everything just right on the pages. Uh, it's just really accessible, really intuitive, and they went farther with this one in some ways because they've added some additional controls right on the front page. The touch response, sympathetic resonance, the key up noises, the release noises, pedal noises. So they, they've just put more up front so you don't have to go searching through a lot of you know menus and tabs and that type of thing. Let's go ahead and play this uh, concert grand. Here we go. So right away, you hear that um, that fullness, that fullness of that Steinway. And this is only the, uh, so you've got an inside mic and you've got the out left and right. So let's just see what that mic pair is. When you pull up this mic uh, control, it shows you a little bit more detail on the exact mics and the placement of the mics. So the inside pair are Newman uh, vintage Newman U87s, and then the outside are some tube mics, some tube Newmans, and those are the 149s. And so, <laughs> you know, they are using just very high quality microphones. So, um, and you can hear that translated. You just hear that translated into this sound. Yeah, I mean, you hear that. <laughs> okay, so let's go to another preset the modern outside and i've i've done something kind of cool with my nano controller i assigned the faders to control the different mic positions so as we go through some of the presets and then we can mix and match some of the um some of the mics using the nano controller which uh, which is a lot of fun this is modern outside and it has it has those vintage Newman 149s, uh, like we heard before, and then it, it adds another pair of U47s on the outside. So they're, they're going with a lot of these, these really nice Newman microphones. Uh, so let's check out the modern, out, modern outside.
I never know where we're going. Uh, but what, whatever, whatever it is, it just comes, it just comes out. So, <laughs> so that instrument just stirs and brings these things out. Just, it is a grand, grand, for sure. When a piano was recorded right with care and with uh, all of the detail that Jason has put into recording this, uh, the studio that he chose, it's the same studio the production grand was recorded in, uh, the Phase One studio in Toronto. And they've just spared, they just used the highest quality uh, converters and you can already hear with the microphones. They've really used the uh, best microphones that they could get their hands on. So, and you can hear you can hear that in in these notes and in these in this piano because when you play a sample, you're creating that experience when it was first recorded, and so um, that is what's that's what excites me. That's what gets gets things going here. Um, all right, so let's look at the next preset. Um, okay, vintage inside, and um, it just has that. Uh, that second inside pair. Well, it's not a, a second inside pair. They've got a separate, uh, you know, pencil microphones for the hammers, but they just have this inside mic. Um, yeah, so let's just take a listen and let's just look at um, some of the other things they've got going. So they've got the sympathetic resonance is the same and the velocity response on. So we've, we've not had reverb on with some of these, uh, with these uh, initial presets. So let's turn it. Yeah, you can hear it now, just a little bit. Well, let's go back to the main. Yeah, no, see that's still without reverb. So you're hearing, what you're hearing is that sympathetic resonance. So this is the, yeah, there you go, there's the reverb. So we turn it back down and you hear that ringing. You hear that nice ringing that he has been able to get with the sympathetic resonance. And we can turn um, turn that up so you can really, you know, maybe exaggerate it a little bit. And he's got catch pedaling too, which I think is kind of neat. So uh, when you hit a chord and you hit the sustain pedal down and then you just, you just lift it up and catch it. Listen. Okay, so I'm going to hold the sustain pedal down and catch it. You hear it, you hear it catching that. So it just kind of, it kind of, um, you know, the notes are ringing, then that pedal hits it and then it just kind of, just kind of lets it go. So it kind of dampens it real quick and then lets it go. So you still kind of get the ring. So that's a very nice, uh, realistic feature, I think, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, very, very nice. And having that inside mic, it gives you that real nice, close, intimate feeling. I like, I like it. So let's go to the next uh, preset at the piano. Now, this is probably going to use the player. Yeah, so you can see uh, the... The player microphone is this crown binaural type of microphone. So it's kind of placed right at the sitting position. So when you're playing this, it's just like you're sitting right there at the piano. So let's just take a listen to that. I just can't get over that that lower end, uh, how nice and round that is, how nice and warm and big that is. Yeah, can you hear that? Very nice. And listen to that ring. 
yeah, it, it, could, it, could, it could have continued. Okay, dream, dream sequence scoring. Okay, so we have the player and then we have the room. So let's just see what the room, these are the ribbon microphones in the room. And then plus you have the player mic. So let's just take a listen and let's look and see what other things we've got going on. So let's take a listen at dream sequence. So we do have a little cathedral in here. Yeah, so that gives that nice big space. Isn't that cool? One of the things on these uh, reviews, I don't have to worry about copyright law too much because I'm creating something fresh as I'm hearing these uh, presets. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, just improvising and just going and following where the uh, where the music has taken you. You never know. So <laughs> so no copyright strikes because we're just we're just creating something, uh, just uh, being together. And I love being able to share uh, this creative process with you as we explore these libraries. That's that's why I say that libraries are destinations. They're not just libraries. They're not just sounds, recorded sounds. They're, they, they are, but they are so much more when they're under your fingers and you're experiencing those sounds and they transport you into some different uh, places, places that you probably have never been before. And that's what makes it a lot of fun. So that did have like a little cathedral reverb in there as well. This is the recital hall. And this has just that that extra room mic. And um, these are AKG 414s uh, out in the room. And you see in the image um, that they're they're just kind of placed way out in the room. So let's just let's just kind of take a listen.
and just one mic pair and you still have that magnificent sound which is cool and there was a little medium-sized convolution room here um, which is really nice and again you can you can just hear those notes ring monster pop monster pop so let's just look at the um uh, the main here yeah so we've got the hammer mics uh the inside the outside again it with the mixer the the mixer page it uh it allows you to, once again to reassign all of these uh, different inputs because even though you have a stereo pair of microphones you can basically treat them as mono sources so you can take the left side from one and the right side from another mic pair and just kind of custom blend all of these different mics together uh, so let's just take a listen to this this is uh, the um, the monster pop and it's got a medium room attached to it as well okay here we go <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so those hammer mics give that that attack and that that bite that you that you need sometimes. Even though it's sharp, it's not, it doesn't have that, that really edgy thing that the C7 has. It's just got a little, it's got, it's got a bite, but it's just got a little different type that uh, sometimes fits better in some circumstances. Okay. Warm pop piano. Okay. So let's take a listen. And I always like to see uh, what's going on. Yeah. So this is a convol it's got a little convolution reverb going on. Uh, New York studio. You know, you have compression and EQ on every one of these channels uh, that you can go in and, and, um, and set. And the EQ that they're using here is Contact's built-in uh, SSL emulation um, EQ. All right, so let's take a listen to this. So this uses the hammer mics and the inside pair of Newman's. Um, so the, the hammer mics are great to give you that little bump, that little edge. Um, now, 
We're going to take a look at one other thing, and uh, that is the ambisonic section here, which uh, which is really kind of uh, kind of different. So I'm going to just going to put this back to the concert grand. And w the way that he scripted these, uh, when you have the mics pulled all the way down, it kind of takes the samples out of play. They're still loaded, but it takes a load off of the uh, off of the engine which really is helpful. So I'm gonna just turn on this ambisonic mic and let's go here. Yeah, you can see this unusual interface because it's it has something to do with how the mic is placed in 3D space somehow. And um, and this is kind of like uh, just really new for me, but like they're, they experimented with using one of these ambisonic 3D mics that captures like this sound and all of these different perspectives and you can mix these together. So let's just take a listen and I'm gonna kind of fool with some of these controls as we're listening just to kind of get an experience with what uh, what's happening here. Here we go. And you hear you heard the stereo field just kind of just spread out, and we're gonna we can bring it back in uh, the width, and you hear it kind of going right in the center. You hear it go back out. Uh, you have different patterns. You've got the, um, let's see here, let's take it to the, um, like the figure eights. So you've got a figure eight pattern and you can adjust the, the angles and the stereo width with these. So let's just take a listen to that. So the figure eight captures everything in front and everything in back. So you're getting a lot of those uh, re early reflections and things bouncing off the walls of the studio. And it captures a very bright, just a very nice natural sound. So that, that piano is just like sitting right there in your... And this is kind of like an experimental feature of these pianos. Yeah. Okay, so you see the angles. See, we can, we can turn the, the angles of those mics. We can control that. And you see the graphic, how it, you can see that turning. Yeah, that's kind of trippy. And you can hear sometimes when it gets like in phase and different things. That's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> so let's just uh, kind of uh, play around with just uh, pulling up some of these different mics. Let's just load them up here. And I'm going to unload the ambient ambisonic mic. So the under mics are like RCA um, <laughs> RCA microphones that's got that have a real neat ten, uh, tone to them, and we can just take a listen to what that sounds like. That's a really cool tone, uh, just underneath the piano with those uh, RCA mics there. 
Okay, so, so these are just the hammers. And then we'll go on to the, uh, the inside. to the next one yeah and and having it here on the uh, you can you can just kind of yeah having that control That is outstanding. And with all of the mics, except for the ambisonic mics, uh, I am at around 14 gigs of memory and just using about 200 voices. Yeah. And then be able to hear all of these mics. This room here, these are the ribbons. And the four fourteens. Just different tone colors, and um, it just makes it so fun to be able to to have all of these different mics right here. <laughs> Now this is like a vintage uh, U47. It's like a center microphone. So it's like straight up in the middle and then you can mix these other mics around it. So like the out left and right. Yeah, so those th those are the tubes and then you've got the the center mic which is the U47. You can blend those together. And that center will give you some presence. Wow, that is great. <laughs> well, so again, this is Simeon Ambergy with praisetracks.com, and it's been a joy once again to share with you another great piano library from Production Voices, the Concert Grand LE. And uh, so you can uh, just take a look at that. The other thing is the LE is 16-bit samples. There are other levels of the pianos that he has created and provided that have up to 24-bit 96K samples which which I've just, I mean, I've never heard of a company giving you that high rate of samples uh, in their libraries, but, but it's possible uh, with uh, production voices. So until next time, thanks so much for joining me and thanks so much for all the support and keep watching because there's more coming soon. See you then.